Welcome to Meeple Mentor. I'm Jared, and we're about to play Dead Man's Doubloons. Let's take a look. I'll show you how. Feel free to pause the video as needed to follow along with your copy of the game. For your convenience, I've added timestamps in the description to the different sections of the tutorial. Make sure to like and subscribe below the video. It helps a lot. Dead Man's Doubloons has each player take the role of a legendary pirate captain racing to get buried treasure. Meanwhile, your crew will be sailing your ship around the island and attacking other pirate ships. Each pirate has their own unique power or ability. Once the treasure has been dug up, captains rejoin their crew and engage in pirate battle until the end. Will you be the richest pirate alive or the most legendary ghost pirate? The game has two parts. The first half of the game is when your pirate captain figure is still on the game board exploring the island. The second part is once the treasure has been dug up and each pirate has returned to their ship's player board. Either way, the game takes place in rounds composed of four phases. Round start, actions, pillage, and round end. You can earn points in many different ways and the game provides a notepad for scoring at the end of the game. Whoever has the most points wins. There are several ways to prepare the game since there are special variants included in the rulebook. I'll cover the base game and go over the variants at the end. To play the base game, remove the following. All compass tokens and one blue tile named Old Mystic, two black jewels and one red tile named Obsidian Cradle, four action cards with green at the top, all six green path tiles, round relic tokens, which include 10 totems and 14 shells, and one color disc per player. Place the standard game board in the center of the table. It's the side with only one beach visible. Place the doubloons in a pile next to the board. Set all the jewels aside face down or in an opaque bag. Separate the different colored landscape tiles into stacks and shuffle them separately. Create a pile next to the game board of round pillage tokens totaling two per player. Remove the 15 captain cards and set them aside for later. These are the action cards that have the blue color at the top and cross swords. Place each water tile face up in each corner of the game board, starting with the quadrant of the board showing the beach. Refer to the table in the rulebook on page 4. The first player will be decided by who can say Ahoy matey in the best pirate voice. Optionally, each player can roll the die. The first player to roll a gold doubloon symbol is the starting player. They take the initiative token. You'll have either the wooden sword or a metal coin that came with the deluxe version of the game. Starting with this player, each player chooses a pirate captain figure and takes their colored pieces, including both ships, and the matching pirate captain's player board. Everyone takes two doubloons each to start the game with. Each player should place their pirate captain figure on the game board's beach area. Place your normal ship in any of the four water regions, except ones with an S on the water tile. They can face in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Keep your ghost ship near you for later. It will replace your normal ship on the game board if your player board's hull track marker is reduced to zero. On your player board, put one of your colored discs on the 10 hull space, one on the zero reputation space, and one covering each of the crew member spaces. Now, based on the number of players, separate the map tile fragments into like stacks and discard zero, one, or two fragment types. The different types are skull, X, Rune Swirl, and Skeleton Hand. Discard random map tile stacks accordingly. It does not matter which stack. For a 5 to 6 player game, discard 0 stacks. 3 to 4 players discard 1 stack, and 2 players discard 2 stacks. Shuffle the remaining chosen map fragment tiles. Randomly discard face down a number of tiles from the game based on player count. In a 2 player game, remove 3 tiles. In a 3 player game, 4 tiles. For 4 players, 2 tiles. 5 players, 4 tiles, and 6 players, 2 tiles. From this new stack, each player is dealt one random map fragment, which they keep in front of them face up for all players to see. Add special map tiles to the remaining map tile stack based on player count. Each round of a game has 4 phases to it. Round start, actions, pillage, and the round end. 
At the beginning of the round, place doubloons on the island based on the player count. They can be near the beach area, but it doesn't matter really. If any doubloons are on the island from previous rounds, they will stay on the board. New coins will still be added. Each player should then draw up to their current hand limit from the deck. By default, the hand limit is 5. Now, each player simultaneously selects three cards they will play this round, setting them face down in front of them in the order they should be played. Once everyone's ready, each player reveals the next card to play at the same time. Some of the water tiles placed during setup say round start on them. During this phase, those tiles trigger and affect any ship starting in the region they're located in. Resolve the effects one after the other in turn order. Other water tiles might say upon entry. Those will activate as soon as a ship enters that region. The S water tiles have no effect. Starting with whoever has the initiative token, each player takes the actions of the current revealed card. The top portion of the card is always done first, which relates to their ship's movement. The bottom part of the card has two actions, but the player chooses only one to do. So with each card played, only two sections actions are done. Going around the table, each player does the actions of one card, then when it's back to the initiative player, reveal the next card and keep going until all three cards have been played out. During the pillage phase, players will get to take doubloons from the board. Begin with the player who has the most pillage tokens and collect one doubloon per pillage token from the island. Then the player with the next highest number of collected pillage tokens goes, and so on. Tied players will take the same amount as equal as possible. If only one player had pillage tokens, they can take double the amount from the doubloons available. Proceed in this manner until there are no doubloons left to assign. Do not take more doubloons than there are on the game board. Also, unless the doubloons are being stolen by another player, any gained or lost doubloons always go to and from the island. During the fourth phase, there's a few checks that take place. Start with these steps. First, check if anyone's pirate ship figure has reached the buried treasure or X spot on the game board. If so, proceed now to resolve the treasure step actions. I'll go into that in detail later. Otherwise, skip this and continue with these round end steps. The next step is to check for Ghost Ship Redemption. If at this point a player with a ghost ship has five doubloons, they will automatically recover to a normal ship. This is mandatory, and they must pay those doubloons back to the island. Their ship will recover and gain seven hull points and two crew. Now each player goes through cleanup. Everyone discards all the used action cards from that round. Then all players discard any pillage tokens acquired back to the pile to be used again next round. Pass the initiative token to the player to the left and proceed to the next round. Let me go ahead and take this time to explain ghost ships. Anytime a player takes enough damage to reduce its hull below one, it becomes a ghost ship. Then follow these steps immediately. First, move the ship's hull damage marker to the ghost ship box found on the player board. Keep whatever crew you still have. Next, the player who did the final damage gains one reputation on their mat. There are some special rules for ghost ship players. When rolling attack dice, a voodoo result counts as one point of damage. They cannot turn around, they cannot repair, nor can they take damage. Ghost ships can still board other ships and attack. Their treasure is cursed. It is worth one less at the end of the game, excluding reputation and crew. You don't want to end the game as a ghost ship. They are not immune to opponents' boarding actions, including stealing map fragment tiles, half doubloons, crew, jewels, or reputation. Their pirate captain figure can still follow during other pirate captains' hunt actions on the island. The top portion of the action card is always done first. These are your ship's movement actions. If the direction icon is solid black, you must take that action. If they're dotted lines, the action's optional. You can apply them to your ship in any order you want. With a straight arrow icon, you move the ship to the next water quadrant of the game board in the direction it's facing. With a curved arrow icon, your ship rotates 180 degrees so it faces the other direction, but stays in the same region. The actions available on the bottom part of the card have circular iconography. This one is the pillage action. Doing this gives you a pillage token from those available. The forward cannon icon is a forward attack. All enemy ships in the adjacent water region you're facing take one damage on their hull. Then roll the attack die and resolve its effects on all the ships that were damaged. The damaged ships should move their player board's hull marker to the left. The two cannons pointing to the side is another attack action. 
With this one, all enemy ships in the same water region take 2 damage on their hull. Then, roll the attack die and resolve its effects on all the ships that were damaged. The damaged ships should move their player board's hull marker to the left. When you roll the attack die, there are three possible results. First is the X over a pirate's face. Rolling this means you kill one of that player's crew. Remove one of the crew discs from their board, always from left to right. The second result shows a doubloon. You steal one doubloon from each enemy ship that you rolled against. The third result is voodoo. It only applies if you're a ghost ship. If you are, you deal one damage to all affected ships. The tools icon is for the repair action. Increase your ship's hull damage marker by one. If you're alone in your water region, increase by two instead. The max is 10. The map icon is the hunt action. If you have less than two map fragments, draw a map tile. If there are none left, you won't take one. There are different types of map fragments. Basic map fragments will sit face up next to the one you started the game with by your player board. Island lore tiles give an immediate advance or exploit action and are then removed from the game. Skull amulet tiles increase your reputation one time on your personal tracker and are removed from the game. Protection orb tiles let you collect one protection orb token to sit next to your player board. Then the tiles remove from the game. If you have two or more map fragments, you'll advance your pirate captain figure on the game board. You get to move your pirate captain figure on the map one space following any valid arrow directions from where you are. Then you pick one of your map fragments and declare that type to the other players. All other players who have that matching map fragment type will also get to move their pirate captain figure after you. They don't have to follow the same path. The first time a pirate captain figure arrives at a colored oval spot on the game board, draw a landmark tile of that same color and place it there. Resolve its effects immediately. Any other pirate captain figure that goes there will also resolve its effects and not draw a new tile. The landmark tile's color gives you an idea of what to expect. Red ones are a cursed passage, they're the most dangerous route, but offer the shortest route to get to the treasure. The blue landmarks are the coastal path and are the safest. The yellow landmarks are the valley of riches. Those are your best chance at finding doubloons and jewels. Once the jewel treasures have been dug up at the buried treasure X spot on the game board, you enter the second half of the game. You'll know because all players' pirate captain figures will be returned to their player boards. From this point forward, all hunt actions are now considered the exploit action. To do the exploit action, draw and reveal a landmark tile from any color stack. Choose if you want the effects applied on yourself or to another player. After resolving it, put it on the bottom of its matching color stack. You cannot gain reputation points for sinking another player this way. It's not an attack. The icon with the grapple on it is the board action. You can only board enemy ships in your same region, and they must be damaged. You may do this even if you have no crew discs. Some cards show the board action with additional prerequisites. The ones with a yellow icon attached to it mean you have to have that icon visible on any previous card of yours that is face up. You didn't need to have used that action though. The boarding actions with a red icon attached to it means your target must have that icon on any of their face up action cards. They also don't need to have chosen that action either. These tokens are called protection orbs. If you have one of these when someone boards you, you give them the orb token to prevent the boarding action effect to happen. They may keep it to use for themselves later. There are different types of boarding actions with different symbols. This one means to steal a map fragment. You get to take one of the opponent's map fragments. This one that shows coins on it is steal half doubloons. You get to take half of their doubloons rounded down. This icon with the jewel means to steal a jewel. Choose and take one jewel from the opponent. The player stealing the jewel chooses which jewel to take from their face-up jewels. Anytime you take jewels, either from the island or stolen, they're placed face-up in front of you. The board action showing a skull and crossbones means to steal reputation. You get to take one reputation from the enemy ship. Move your marker forward one space on your player board's reputation track. Your opponent moves their marker backwards one space on their player board. If they don't have any reputation, you can't perform this action. If you've maxed out your own reputation, you can do the action but gain nothing. The last icon means to steal crew. They lose one of their crew discs and you gain one of yours. 
You don't trade your colored discs. Each player uses their own to mark the transfer. If you have no crew, an enemy cannot steal crew from you. You can steal someone's crew if they have crew and you're full. You just don't get any new ones. When removing a crew disc, always remove them from left to right. When gaining a crew disc back, place them back on from right to left. The maximum crew is always four. There are four different penalties for losing crew members. Under the crew disc locations, you'll see the lost crew icons. The first one means your hand size is reduced by one. So now your hand size is four instead of five. The second one means your ship's unique ability no longer works. Once you lose your third crew member, you again reduce your hand size by one down to three. The fourth crew lost means you can no longer come about. You can no longer use the ship turn arrow action to rotate to the other direction. Only external forces can make your ship turn around until you gain a crew member back. As I mentioned in the Phase 4 round-in section, the first step is to check if anyone's pirate captain has reached the buried treasure space. If so, you've triggered the final part of the game. From then on, the hunt action on cards only does an exploit, which I already explained. First, all players on the buried treasure space of the mountain draw three random jewels. Then, all players one space away draw two random jewels. Then, any players two spaces away get to draw one random jewel. If there are players tied for distance or share a space, turn order determines who draws first. After jewels are drawn, everyone discards all their action cards, including ones in their hand. Now, combine the discard pile, draw deck, and the previously set aside captain cards. Shuffle everything together to form a new deck. Remove all the landmark tiles from the island and place them back in the respective stacks. Reshuffle each stack. Now move all players' pirate captain figures to the first base of the end game track on their player boards. Each player additionally gains one crew, representing the captain returning with the search party. From now on, any time a captain card is played, that player moves their pirate captain figure up the track one space. They move only when the card is actually activated or resolved. Once one player's captain reaches the final space, the game end is triggered and the in-game scoring will take place at the end of this round. The player who triggered the end of the game doesn't get any type of bonus points. The game provides a score pad to track each player's points to see who won. Each player gets points for jewels they collected. 5 for each white diamond, 4 for each red ruby, and 3 for each green emerald. You get 2 points for each basic map fragment, and 1 point for each doubloon. However, if you end the game as a ghost ship, you lose 1 point for each jewel, map fragment, and doubloon in your possession. You gain 1 point for each crew member disc still on your board. Then, everyone gets points based on your reputation track. You can gain 0, 3, 7, or 12 points depending on where your disc is. The player with the most points is the winner. Ties are broken by who has the most doubloons. This game is full of possibilities and ways to play it. Included in the rulebook are a few more recommended ways to play from the designer. The first change is to award 3 points to the player who collected the most of each scoring category. Jewels, doubloons, reputation levels, treasure map variety, and even for having the most hull points on your ship. The first big variant is recommended for serious cutthroat competition. The captain cards that normally steal a player's reputation will instead allow you to steal their ship. You literally get up and change seats and switch who is controlling which ship. Action cards, map fragments, jewels, damage, crew, all stay where they are. Another variant is to introduce black jewels you'll add the black jewels to the mix during setup. They provide the owner a free attack die roll when you enter a new region containing an enemy ship. If you had two jewels, you get two separate rolls that resolve individually. The voodoo icon will transfer the black jewel to the opponent. At the end of the game, black jewels are worth negative three points. The next optional module is the legendary ghost ship which they recommend to use especially during a two-player game. The game is set up with water tiles for one extra player. The last player to pick their captain also gets to choose an unused ghost ship figure to represent the legendary ghost ship. They can place it in any region facing either direction. It starts with two doubloons, two random jewels, two crew, and two reputation levels it gets dealt one of the randomly removed map fragments. Before the pillage phase, the ship moves forward one region, gains one pillage token, 
and performs both a broadside and forward attack. The legendary ghost ship doesn't have a unique ability and cannot use water tiles other than S. It will always stay a ghost ship. Another quick optional module is to add compass tokens. Each player will start the game with two compass tokens. The blue landmark tile named Old Mystic should be added to the blue stack. A compass token can be spent at the start of your turn if you have zero or one crew on board. Spending the token allows you to exchange your active action card for another player's face-up action card. The final game variant is the largest, the Alternate Island Adventure. I won't go into detail on it as it makes a lot of changes to the base game. Explaining it all would be like doing a whole new video. I encourage you to take a look at it in the rulebook if you're interested. It uses the backside of the game board, gives more freedom of ship movement, and adds tribal ruins and relics to the game. And that's it. Keep the rulebook handy and check BoardGameGeek.com for FAQs and extra content. Check the video description for links to Big Viking Mats, BoardGameGeek, Top Shelf Gamer for token upgrades, SleepKings.com for a 10% off coupon on card sleeves, and Mr. Meeple t-shirts for cool board gaming shirts. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you found this teaching helpful. Stick around to watch another Learn to Play video. And remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.